Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at indexing in Pandas. If you remember from previous videos, the index is an object that stores the access labels for all Pandas objects. The index in a data frame is extremely useful because it's customizable and you can also search and filter based off of that index. In this video, we're going to talk all about indexing, how you can change the index and customize that, as well as how you can search and filter on that index. And then we're also going to be looking at something a little bit more advanced called multi-indexing. And you won't always use it, but it's really good to know in case you come across a data frame that has that in it. So let's get started by importing pandas. So import pandas as PD. Now we'll get our first data frame. We'll say df is equal to pd.read underscore CSV. And I've already copied this, but we're going to do R and we're going to put this file path. So I have this world population CSV. I will have that in the description, just like I do in all of my other videos. So let's run DF and let's take a look at this data frame. So we have a lot of information here. We have rank, country, continent, population, as well as the default index from zero all the way up to 233. Now, if you haven't watched any of my previous videos on pandas, the index is pretty important and it's basically just a number or a label for each row. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a unique number. Um, you can create or add an index yourself if you want to, and it doesn't have to be unique, but it, it really should be unique, uh, especially if you want to use it appropriately. For what we're doing, the country is actually going to be a pretty great index because the country you know is going to be all unique because we're looking at every single row as a different um, country as well as the population. So let's go ahead and create this country or add this country as our index. Now we can do this in a lot of different ways, but the first way that you can do this, if you already know what you are going to create that index on, is we can just go right in here when we're reading in this file and we'll say comma index underscore, oops, I spelled that completely wrong, index underscore column. And we'll say that is equal to, and then we're going to say quote country. So we're taking this country and we're going to assign it as the index. Now let's read this in. And as you can see, this is our index. Now it looks a little bit different. We didn't have this country header uh, right here, which is specifying that this is still the country, but you can tell that this is the index based off the um, bold letters, as well as it being on the far left and all the regular columns for the data is over here, while the country header is right here and it's lower than all the others. Just a quick way that you can see that that is the index. Now, before we move on, I wanna show you some other ways that you can do this as well but I'm gonna show you how to reverse this index before we move on. And we'll say data frame. So we had our data frame right here. So we have data frame dot, and we'll say reset underscore index. And then we'll say in place is equal to true, which means we don't have to assign this to another variable and all that stuff, it'll just be true. So now when we run that data frame again, the index was reset to the default numbers. So now let's go down here and I'll show you how to do this in a different way. You can do df dot, we'll say set underscore index, and then we'll just say country. So very similar to when we were reading in that file and we said set the index or that index column, we said index column equals country. If we do this and we run it in, it works. But if we say data frame right down here, it's not going to save that. If we wanna save it, just like we did above, we're gonna say in place is equal to true. That is gonna save it to where we don't have to assign another variable. So now when we run this, the data frame right here, which is gonna populate this, the data frame is gonna say in place is equal to true, so that country will now be our index again. Let's run this, and there we go. Really quickly, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this entire Panda series, and that is Udemy. Udemy has some of the best courses at the best prices, and it is no exception when it comes to Pandas courses. If you wanna master Pandas, this is the course that I would recommend. It's gonna teach you just about everything you need to know about Pandas. So huge shout out to Udemy for sponsoring this Panda series, and let's get back to the video. Now, what's really great about this index is we're able to search based off just this index. And so we can filter on it and, and basically look through our data with it, and there are two different ways that you can do that. At least this is a very common way that people who use pandas will do to kind of search through that index. The first one is called lock and there's lock and I lock. And that stands for location or integer location. Let's look at lock first. Let's say df.lock and then we'll do a bracket. Now we're able to specify the actual string, the label. So let's go right up here and let's say Albania. So we'll say Albania. So again, this is just looking at the location. Let's run this. 
Now it's going to bring up all the Albania data, just like here, where it's kind of looks like a column in a column. And we can get this exact same data, but using iLock right here. And when we ran lock, we were searching based off Albania, which is in the zero one position. So if we actually pull the one position for that integer, the iLock, we can look at the one position. And this should give us the exact same data. Now let's take a look at multi-indexing and we'll come back to a little bit of this in a second. So multi-indexing is creating multiple indexes. We're not just gonna create the country as the index. Now we're gonna add an additional index on top of that. So let's pull up our data frame. Right now we have the country, but let's do dot reset index. And we'll say in place equals true. Oops, let's run it. So now we have our data frame. Now let's set our index, but this time when we set our index, we're gonna add the country as the index as well as the continent as an index. So we'll say data frame dot set underscore index. Then we'll do a parentheses. And instead of just doing country like we did before, we're gonna create a list. Oops, and we'll do it like that. And then we'll say, oops, continent and separate it by a comma. So we have continent and country. Let's just say in place is equal to true. Now, when we run this, we're gonna have two indexes. Let's see what this looks like. And let's run this. So now we have country as well as continent as our index. Now you may notice that these indexes are repeating themselves on this continent index. So we have Europe right here and Europe right here, as well as Asia and Asia. And it looks a little bit funky, but we are able to sort these values and make it look a lot better. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll do df dot sort underscore index. And when we run this, it should sort our index alphabetically. And we can also look in here and see what kind of things we can, you know, specify. We can specify the axis, but it's automatically going to be looking at the zero. This is zero and this is one. So we have two axes within our data frame. You choose the level, whether it's ascending or not ascending, in place, kind, string, sort remaining, all of these different things. The only one that I really, you know, think is worth looking at is the ascending. We already know some of these other ones. But if we look at ascending, let's run it. Now it's sorted these. And so now it's kind of grouped together. So we have Africa and all the African ones, as well as South America and all the South American ones. Let's really quickly say PD dot set underscore option. And we'll say display dot max dot columns. And just like this, let's run it. And I need to specify, whoops, specify right here. Let's see how many rows we have. 235. So let's do 235. Let's run this. And now when we run this, you can see that Africa is all grouped together and all the countries are in alphabetical order under it. And then we go all the way down to Asia. And again, just all in alphabetical order. If we wanted to, we could say ascending equals true. And then when we run this, oh, let's say false. And then when we run this, it's the exact opposite. So it starts with South America, the last one, and then goes in reverse alphabetical order. We could also say false, make it a list and do comma true. And just like this. And then it would sort this first column as false and this next column as true. So you can really customize it, but you know, for what we're doing, we don't need any of that. We just need to be able to see this right here. So now when we try to search by our index, like we did before, we did data frame dot loc. Now, when we did that and we said, you know, let's say Angola, when we specified Angola, it's not going to work properly because it's searching in this first index for the first string that we have. We can search Africa. And let's search for Africa. And now we have all of the African countries. And if we want to specify to Angola, we can also go down another level. Oops by doing angle, Angola. 
And now we have what we were looking at before where we're calling all the data within those, but we couldn't do it just based off Africa because we had an additional index right here. So once we called both indexes, now we get this view, but let's look at that I look really quick. When we run this, let's just say one, because right up here, oh, we have Angola zero and then one. So you think it may pull up Angola. Let's go ahead and run this. And it's still pulling up Albania. Let's go right up here. If you remember when we didn't have the multiple indexes, it was pulling up Albania. The difference when you're doing these multi indexes is that the loc is able to specify this, whereas this one does not go based off that multi indexing. It's going to go based off the initial index or the integer based index. So that's a lot about indexing in pandas. We'll cover even a few more things in future videos as we get more and more into pandas. But this is a lot of what indexing looks like within pandas. And again, super important to learn how to do and know how to do because it's a pretty important building block as we go through this panda series. So I hope you enjoyed this video on indexing. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.